Well, this is one of the two things that came in the post today. Um, I was really surprised it came in this fast. Uh, Schutztruppe. And the reason why I've got Schutztruppe here is because of Charles Zatora picking it up, uh, doing an unboxing and a playthrough, and I just kept staring at the map, and he was um, having it. And he ha if you haven't seen his stuff, I'll uh, certainly put his uh, channel and uh, the specific link to uh, starting off, going off, and to taking a look at his uh, Schutztruppe playthrough. Um, yeah, I was just like, oh my gosh, to be able to have um, an opera. I'm not doing an unboxing. He's, uh, which McCall, it's already, uh, Charles the Tar's already done this. I just wanted to pop the map out because it's gorgeous. I was even mentioning the Zoe Dufour today because she was a possibility she was going to be pop popping over. She isn't, but I was like, oh, wait till you get to see this map. Um, I so wish to get this on the, on the, on the, on a table proper, it's not funny. It's neat to be able to start seeing all these places that I've been hearing about in um, uh, when I've been doing the daily um, headlines and the war summary and whatnot. It's like, so I get to find out where all these places are. I didn't realize that Kilimanjaro, it's way over there, is that far away from Lake Victoria. I didn't know. Anyways, I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna get into the map stuff, but I did want to show to you the second thing that did come in. It's um, it's the same uh, it's the same publication that, uh, oops, sorry. And just trying to uh, navigate around some really, uh, you know, I'll have to take a look. So there's um, uh, the latest issue of uh, World War One Illustrated came in. It's a quarterly, and um, it's the same uh, same publication that uh, Clark Commando 1983 uh, gifted me the the first eight issues. But um, I'm really I just skimmed through it very quickly. I'm certainly not going to, um, but there are going to be a fair amount of these things I'm going to be eventually talking about in the live stream. I certainly want to bring them up. What? A, it's just a really darn good... Here, I'm going to see if I can bring her down so that way I don't have to do and I can just maybe do an overhead. I'll give that a shot. Hold on here. There. I'll try to... There. Let's see if I can just zoom in a little bit. I don't want to go too... Too crazy. I keep forgetting this camera is, it's uh, almost like, you know, uh, objects appear bigger, bigger later than they do uh, uh, when you're staring them on the little screen. There. So, anyways, it's got a lot of good stuff. Really, really good. Well, I say this every time the magazine comes out. They're really, really good. It was one thing I certainly do want to um, pop out on the, the live stream uh, later is they have, is it on the back of the book? Yes. This is about uh, musings from the Western Front, early visits to the AEF battlefields. It's got a thing about uh, um, very early days of uh, what they did. But there's this other thing I wanted to show later on. The, some of these articles are monstrous. I think it was this, uh, so I'm going to be bringing that up at the live stream as well. I think I've mentioned this is something I'm going to aspire to eventually. I do want to write an article for these guys, but I'm maybe a year away from that. I'm nowhere near. Some of these articles are monstrous. Not all of them, but uh, some really neat articles here. And it's neat too, because obviously a lot of these uh, people that have written the articles, I see them in the meetings. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's this person or that person, you know? So that'll be kind of neat. Like Cavalry Corps, Motor Machine Gun Battery, The Red Desert Rescue. That guy looks like a, a tough as nails SOB. I can tell you that. A pro-German Arab was an officer of the Turkish Army. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll try to... That's probably a lot of glare and whatnot, but I'm just going to go through it quickly. But I'm also trying to entice you to maybe join up with the, the World War I um, Historical Association. Maybe I should put them in the links as well. And actually, well, their renewal is usually on the, the 11th of November, around that time, anyways. And there's all kinds of different airships. I didn't realize there were so many different types of airship designs. And, uh, you know, obviously some are more successful than others, but it's really neat to see. Uh, I didn't realize there were so many different kinds. This one's a really cool one. I don't know if you can see it there. But, uh, yeah, where's that thing I wanted to show you? It was about um, Fortress Strasbourg. Uh, was it about the... Um, being able to not become a naturalized American like overnight. It was like super quick. Um, they wanted to get s soldiers in there and you just had to re uh, read this thing off super, super duper. No, that's it. Here it is. So I'm going to bring that off later in the in the live stream for sure. It's uh, the thing about uh, 
uh, how, do you, how you can get it done in like one day versus before it would take you quite a long time something like five years or something like that or maybe less I don't know but uh, that's it I just wanted to kind of oh yeah and this as well uh, I'm certainly going to be using that as my uh, World War One uh, image of the day when we get to it April 2nd 1917 when the uh, uh, President Wilson declares war on Germany. Holy smokes. That's not too far away. That's really about it. I was, I'm just uh, wanted to share what I got in the post today and uh, a nod to Charles Zatora for flipping sure. All right. See you later.